Imagine just not thinking about your body. You are not hating it. You are not loving it. You are just a floating head. I'm a floating head wandering through the world. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name's Fran. I create content on self-love, conscious living, and personal growth, and everything I've learned on my own healing journey. So in this video, I wanted to share step-by-step -step guidance that will help you reduce your body image anxiety, deal with your insecurities on body image, and also improve self-esteem. Those are things I've been practicing for years when I was trying to heal from my eating disorder, which originated from my dissatisfaction towards my body. I successfully recovered from it and reduced my body image anxiety when I committed to taking care of myself through both intense self-education and also professional guidance. So let's jump right into it. The first step is to respect and listen to your body. Since we're so used to judge our body by if it's meeting our aesthetic goals, it's hard for us to just focus on the functionality of it. For example, when we're cold, our body would just try really hard to maintain the body temperature to keep us warm. And also when we're very hungry, when we experience hunger, our body would desperately look for inner fuels to fit on. However, most of the time, instead of protecting and respecting our body, we let the whole world, we give the whole world this permission to judge us if it's good or bad. Instead of pushing back, we actually have this self-loathing feeling to agree on this world and turn ourselves against our body. So it's time that we reclaim our autonomy. It's time that we listen to our body and give it what exactly it needs. It includes eat intuitively, rest well, and exercise regularly. When all of those become some sort of the ritual, it'd be so much easier for us to cultivate this ability to find our feeling, to know and identify exactly how we feel, so that it'd be easier for us to voice our needs in the future, which is the foundation towards self-love. Intuitive eating is a topic that I have created a lot of videos around on this channel. I won't jump into saying something that I don't believe in. In this channel, I will only say things that I have personally tested. I will only say things that I've personally echoed with and that have worked for me. As I've mentioned, intuitive eating actually helped me recover from 15 years bulimia, one type of eating disorder, because it basically removed all the trigger of binge eating for me because now I feel safe around all sorts of food. I believe that there's no absolute bad food in the world. Every type of food actually provides some kind of value. My hunger cues and metabolism were very messed up um, when I was starting practicing intuitive eating because I don't have a very reliable uh, hunger cues to listen to and I don't have a very um, precise indication of whether I'm hungry or just trying to express emotions through food. Um, but after some time into it, I started to find those feelings. I started to know to distinguish whether I'm physically hungry or mentally hungry so that I won't have this irregular eating pattern anymore. So intuitive eating has definitely made my life so much easier because it allowed me to make peace with all sorts of food. Resting well is something that's very important but has been greatly overlooked. We live in this stressful and competitive time now. Long work hours, especially now that um, people are working from home right now because of the global pandemic. The boundary between work hour and rest hour has been like kind of blurry. And it's easy to be overstepped. We almost feel this pressure to respond 24 hours, to be online, be on call 24 hours a day because we couldn't easily just sign off. We always feel like obligated to answer to someone right away. That's why it's so important to have this mental clock. So we sign off at a certain clock and it will send the signal to our brain to rest, to soothe our nerves, just to have some me time for relaxation. Because burnout comes at a heavy cost, it definitely reduces productivity when we're in this energy deficit mode. I'm putting on a regular exercise here, not because I wanted to promote that you go to the gym five or six times a week. All I'm saying is that experience matters the most when it comes to exercise. A lot of people go to the exercise session with the intention to burn off calories, 
but I discovered it can be actually restrictive in some way. For example, I've been working out since 2013, which is a long years, but there was some time in the middle that I just feel like overtrained because I forced myself to go to the gym to hit some numerical goal, to lose my body fat to some certain level, or or just in general to reach some goal that I can show off later on Facebook or Instagram. I've noticed that whenever I hit this numerical goal, for example, I had this 110 pounds body weight goal, I wasn't happy. I was actually even more frustrated because I say to myself like, okay, that's it. I'm not happy right now like I don't feel like my life has reached a point that I could live happily ever after let's just admit that it doesn't magically happen your life is not gonna have a magical turnaround when you hit this numerical goal of your body weight or appearance because when you're unhappy with yourself nothing externally nothing about your appearance or weight are gonna change that and that's the time I started questioning the meaning of working out I started ask myself why do I have to reach some sort of like beauty standard because I wanted to be just socially approved? Or why do I exhaust myself to achieve that numerical goal just to show off? I think it was meant to improve our life's quality, not to decrease it. That's why recent years I have been trying to explore different forms of exercising. For example, taking a brisk walk home when you get off work can be a very soothing and relaxing experience. And also to do dance challenges with your friends or family through PlayStation or Wii. That can be very engaging and fun as well. And also one thing I would definitely enjoy those days, I would try different um, kind of group classes like Samba and also Battle Rope and all that. Just to feel my body strength and explore body movements. Doing exercises that I enjoy right now is definitely my priority. The second step is the most important of all. It takes a long time to practice, but the rewards can be immense. Oftentimes, it wasn't about how we actually look like. It was about the stories that we have and we believe about ourselves. For example, when we have belly fat or arm fat, we will have the story telling ourselves that we are greedy and we have insatiable appetite. When we eat outside of our planned schedule, we would call ourselves failure because we don't have any self-control. And that's the saddest of all because those stories weren't actually born with us. It was stories that we took from other people. It was beliefs that we internalized. It was other people's voice. It was society's voice. It wasn't ours. As long as we're living and breathing and walking on this planet, there are enough information that we could find to use as new stories to berate ourselves and to self-sabotage. To practice body neutrality is to gain immunity from those false beliefs. And step one is to identify those beliefs. Those beliefs can often flash back as images, like you can see something like when you're children or something. Or it can sound like some kind of voice in your head that wasn't yours, but when you try really hard, you can actually tell whose voice is that. This is also how therapy sessions work. Therapists would help you trace back to a certain memory where this image or the story were born. They help you reinterpret those stories and also help you release the feelings and emotions that you weren't able to process or interpret at that time. When energy that stuck around that story is released, that part of you is healed. In order to do this, you have to have this awareness. And for awareness improving, I would always recommend meditation. I will show you how to do this. For example, I've noticed that on days I overeat, I would have this fear and thought that I feel like all this fat is going to be on me instantly and it's going to be stuck around my belly and my calves and also my arm part. So I would feel like those parts have instantly gained weight and I would notice uh, mood fluctuations because I would be pretty depressed. So now I wanted to dig into what story I have around this incident. One very effective way is to keep asking questions. I think my belly, calf, and arm are too fat, and why it matters. Well, I think people would notice that um, if I put on weight around those areas, have they told you that? And what will happen if they notice? 
they will think that I'm ugly and also um, oddly shaped. So what? Well, they, I think they will stop liking me. And um, if they don't like me, they are going to go away and leave me. Okay, so uh, probably a lot of you will stop here because you think this is the final consequence. But others' action cannot be the core belief. It all comes down to how you feel about yourself. You have to go deeper than this. If they leave you, what will happen? Okay, I'm unwanted. What does it say by you're unwanted? I think I'm unlovable. So there it is. That's a core belief that you don't think you're lovable. After discovering it, you have to keep questioning it by doing a reality check for each statement you've made and finding opposite proofs. For example, is it true that my arms and calves got bigger like instantly? People tell me that? Did I actually measure it? Do people actually tell me that they think I'm ugly or they wanted to leave me? Why do I think that people wanted to leave me? Is it because they have this poker face? Are they in a bad mood? Is it possible there are other things going on in their life that cost their poker face? Can you absolutely be sure that you're the reason why their attitude change? I want to stress once again the importance of reviewing the past of when you first got that idea and how many stories that you have built up around that story that confirmed the original belief. Because you will often find out that how a mindless remark or sarcasm from people that you weren't even familiar with can leave a heavy mark on your life and it can leave you to hold on to and limiting belief for years and years that restricts your life. So I encourage you to do this exercise regularly because it really can help you break free from your limiting beliefs and find new possibilities of your life. The third step, which is the last step, is to practice daily affirmations. I know sometimes it sounds like cliche or just one of those mantras that you've heard about like, oh, positive vibes only, or love yourself 100% and all that. But as a trauma survivor and as a healer, I wanted to introduce how I use the affirmations to my advantage to a point that it actually works. Oftentimes those quotes and affirmations are from people who have actually experienced it who have actually fought it and who have actually struggled and lived it. And when they made it, they looked back and they summarized it based on their past experience. In order for us to really achieve their state, we have to actively live it. We have to actively absorb it, to hear about it, to tell it to our friends and family and interpret it ourselves and to write it down, to memorize it and to apply it to our life. As far as the specific method, it can be very flexible. Like you can put it on the wall. You can put it as a screensaver. You can actually write it in a mirror. For me, the most effective way is to write it down. Like I have a private blog that I write down everything I learn and I would constantly review it. I would add new understanding to it because it varies every day. And that's how I gain like deeper and deeper understanding into it and use it to my advantage. So now I wanted to end this video with three of my favorite quotes that I practice daily um, as affirmations to myself. My body does not define my worth. I'm lovable as it is. It has nothing to do with what I wear, how well I perform at work, or how much money I have. I was born with a unique gift to the world. I just need to find it. I hope you find this video helpful. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.